We can proceed with the, pre with the meeting today. All right, so we shall continue. Uh, colleagues, we just heard everyone in public comment express uh, the outrage and anger and hurt. Uh, this council must grapple with devastating transgressions by three of our colleagues that were brought to light and the deep wounds and suffering their actions have caused to the people of Los Angeles and to members of this body. These transgressions must be confronted and dealt with. I, for one, am hurt, angry, and sad. I join all of you in those emotions. As we continue to process this, let's take stock of this city and we as an elected body have faced in recent years, not just a global pandemic or a movement for social justice and equity or the crises of homelessness and housing, but a series of scandals that have rocked this chamber. These past episodes have already deepened, damaged the public trust and have already jeopardized our ability to do our duty on behalf of those we serve. And now this, a moment like, unlike any other, what we do now and in the immediate days and weeks to come will be pivotal. And colleagues, we can, we will, and we must meet this moment. The casual racism, the abhorrent language, the dehumanizing racist reference describing a child, a black child, and the son of a colleague, the denigration of indigenous peoples, which we just celebrated last night at Grand Park Indigenous Peoples Day, and the Oaxacan community was there in, in strong and in force, the familiar tropes against LGBTQ plus individuals, insulting words describing an Armenian American, the clear abuse of power, carving up the city for pure political gain, the notion that giving renters a greater voice in their government is somehow wrong, profoundly unbecoming and profoundly unacceptable. Colleagues, at this critical and devastating moment, I'm here to affirm there is no place for this. There are no excuses, not in this chamber, not as a member of this body, not in this building, not in this city, not in the year 2022, not ever. Councilmember Bonin, you and I are the only LGBTQ members of this council. I was at you and Sean's wedding. You have a beautiful son and a beautiful family. And in many communities, including the one we both belong to, we build our families. That is a big part of our culture. Your family is an inspiration to all of us, all people, including me and my partner, George. My heart, our hearts are with you, Sean, and your family at this time. You deserved better. We deserve better. The people of Los Angeles deserve better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do not believe, I do not believe we can have the healing that is necessary or govern as we need to while council members Martinez, De Leon, and Cedillo remain as members of this council. I say those words with a heavy heart, but this is a heavy and a deeply tragic moment for this city. The court of public opinion has rendered a verdict and the verdict is they all must resign. They need to consider what is best for the city and the people of Los Angeles. That is the only consideration. They must ask, ask themselves, what will be their role to help us heal? And, and can that healing happen if they remain around this horseshoe? And I believe it cannot. In the coming days, there is an enormous amount of business to attend to. I preside before you today as acting city council president, but I state unequivocally, I have no interest in seeking the council presidency so myself. I had no ambition to be a president pro tem, but I answered the call to serve as I has, have always done. My only motivation then and now is to be a public servant. And as I sit before you now, presiding in this capacity, in my role, it is to help us get through this moment and help set us on a path to stability and to healing. To that end, today I introduced a motion that calls for the election of a new permanent council president next Tuesday, October the 18th. 
the work of my life is public service. And my job now is to help us heal and move forward. But while I do serve in this temporary capacity, I also believe that part of my job at this juncture is to ensure we reform the way we do business on this council. The comments at the center of this storm came from a discussion on redistricting. They stemmed from business that was before this council at the time these recordings were made a year ago. And if we are to regain the trust and faith of Angelinos, we need to make some big changes. Today, I introduced a motion that calls for major reform of the city charter, the city council, and how we approach redistricting representation, the topics at the center of this crisis. The size of this city council has been 15 members since 1925, when the city of Los Angeles had just under 1 million people. Today, we are a diverse metropolis of 4 million and this council should reflect and represent the residents we serve. A ballot measure that increases the number of council seats will help us meet that goal and involve Angelinos in the process, as will an immediate redistricting process should the people decide they want an expanded city council. Tomorrow, before this council, we will consider another proposed ballot measure, one that calls for an independent redistrict redistricting commission for the normal process we undertake every 10 years to determine council boundaries. This will be another opportunity for us to ensure that we restore a sense of transparency, trust, and faith that Angelinos deserve to have in their government. This is indeed a moment of crises, but it is also an opportunity to demand and receive accountability and to make some structural changes that make our city government better. But in order to be better, we need to do better. And that starts right now, right here. Los Angeles is a special and unique place. We love this city. It is beautiful because of its diversity. It is beautiful because of the diversity of people and cultures that live here and who come here to build a better life. It is beautiful because it is a city of dreamers and doers, of creatives and creators. And it is a place that people are drawn to because they can hope and they can imagine and they can believe in stories and ideas and, and ideals that are bigger than themselves. This moment is bigger than all of us. And we are the legislative body that sets the direction for this city. It is the privilege of a lifetime and a responsibility that defines us, never more so than in this very moment. This is the city of angels, and this moment requires us to appeal to the better angels of our nature that reside within all of us. We must confront the violations of trust, integrity, professionalism, and confidence that are before us, and we must demand better. We must demand action, and we must deliver change. And if we do those things, I am confident we can move forward into a brighter future for the city we love and for the people we serve. And I thank you for that. And I, I'm gonna call upon Councilwoman Rodriguez.